sigma y minus sigma m plus sigma m will give sigma y. Sigma y m will get cancelled. So it is equal to that means if you add these two matrices or tensors, you are going to get this tensor. That so that is why we say that when you add these two, you are going to get the stress tensor at that particular point. So this stress tensor at any point can be split into two <coughs> types of stress tensors, out of which one is called as the spherical or hydrostatic stress tensor, other one is called as the deviatorial stress tensor. So what is the significance of these two? Significance of these two is <coughs> the sigma s is the you know, sigma s is the other hydrostatic or spherical stress tensor. That what is the effect of that? It produces uniform volume changes without any change in shape. Yeah, no, no, no. What is the meaning of that? Suppose if a body is subjected to uh, only this uh, type of stress, let us say sigma s, then there will be change in volume. Change in volume means volume may increase or volume may reduce. When you can have increase in volume when it is subjected to tensile stress, correct? When it is subjected to pull or tensile stress, you can expect increasing volume. When it is subjected to compressive stress or push force, then you can expect Compression. decreasing volume, correct? So increase in volume or decrease in volume will happen, but that increase or decrease will be uniform. Why it is uniform? Uniform means same. It is same, constant in all these directions because the normal stresses are same in all these directions. Correct. So instead of sigma n, sigma y, sigma z, we are taking sigma m. So all these are equal to sigma m. That is why it is uniform without any change in shape. That means suppose if the element is, let us say, rectangular element, then the element remains as rectangular element only because it is subjected to equal amount of stress in all the three directions. So rectangle, 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 cube, cube, rectangle, rectangle. That's right, huh? So again, uniform changes will take place in all the three directions. Okay? Either the stresses, depending on the nature of stress, the volume may increase or decrease. Whereas the second type of stress tensor is known as sigma d. What is the effect of that? It produces change in shape and finally may cause failure. So suppose if, the, if any element fails, if a part of a structure fails, that will be due to this second one. In careful example, so distinguish between spherical uh, stress tensor and deviator stress tensor. So you are doing very well. You have to matrix work though. You have to write these two matrices and this equation you have to write. And finally, you have to write this. Now, sometimes there will be a problem. Problem is very very simple. So the problem is like this: express the stress tensor. He has given a stress tensor. He has given in kilopascals. So 1 kilo pascal is pascal and then newton per meter square. So kilo newton per meter square like that. 1 kilo newton is 10 power 3 newton divided by 1 meter is 10 power 3 millimeter square. So 10 power 3 divided by 10 power 6. And then 10 power minus 3. Correct? 10 power minus a newton per meter square that is MPA. That means 1 MPA is equal to 10 power 3 kPa or 1 kPa is equal to 10 power minus 3 MPa. Mega angle, mega pascal, mega angle 10 power 6 and 1, kilo angle 10 power 3 and 1, giga angle 10 power 9. So, that's what So, as a proposal, MPN are a proposal, GPN are a proposal, KPN are a proposal, or any other we are not worried about. Now, how to express this stress tensor into spherical and deviator and stress tensor? So, this is sigma now. This is sigma, okay? Sigma is given now. This sigma has to be expressed as in terms of sigma s and sigma d. So, here we have to find out sigma m first. Mean stress we have to find out. What is the value of mean stress here? This is sigma x, this is sigma y, this is sigma z, okay? So, mean stress is the average. Average is 30, 40, 30, 20. Average is 31, 30 kPa. So sigma m value is 30 kPa. Now what is the spherical stress tensor? It is sigma m determining the principal diagonal element. They are the sigma m values, correct? Others are 
zeros. So sigma m is 30. So again, I will tell you 30, 0, 0, 0, 30, 0, 0, 0, 30. Correct? This is your spherical or hydrostatic stress tensor. And second one is sigma d. d we are on the stress tensor. It is given by this one. So what you have to do? You have to subtract sigma m from the principal diagonal elements. Rest of, rest of the elements remain same. And then you change it around. So you have to sigma x minus sigma m over 40 minus 30. You have to say 30 minus 30. Here 20 minus 30. All the other elements remain same. So if you simplify that, you will get this one. This is the tensor. So this uh, stress tensor is called as the dv orthogonal stress tensor. So finally, if you add sigma s and sigma d, you are going to get the sigma. And then, so this is a very simple problem. So theory can go. So five marks ke, uh, they may ask you to write the theory or they may give problem also. The problem is five marks ke, they are Question number one is given. So three papers per se, you know. Very easy. Huh? So we have to write the definition and also this, this is important, it is very important, what is the difference between the unit? So sigma s will not lead to any failure, it gives uniform change in volume without any change in shape, whereas sigma d produces change in shape and finally it may lead to failure of the structure. So this is what I wanted to explain, okay?